Greetings CSers, I'm Professor Kaufman and what ensues is a short guide to some advanced features of SSH that many of you will find useful. There's an official guide to usage of SSH on CSE Labs machines that's produced by CSIT and available at the following web address. The page itself appears as follows and opens with several videos uh, that are useful with respect to usage of SSH, and then some additional information in an accordion menu down low uh, that has some advanced features that we'll be covering. Among those are the key-based authentication and the transfer of files um, through the use of SSH. I find this key-based authentication to be the most useful, and so that's where we'll start. Over here, I'll have some notes and I'll expand this part to discuss uh, the premise here. This part of the tutorial is for those who are sick of typing in their password and dual authenticating every time they want to access a CSE IT machine. Uh, this oftentimes happens through normal SSH connections or more commonly for students who are using VS Code and its remote editing features, which is piggybacking on top of SSH connections. Every time you want to form such a connection, uh, you have to authenticate with a password and uh, then do the two-factor authentication using your phone and a duo push. This gets to be vexing over time and com completely eliminated so you don't need to type any passwords in through the use of this uh, key authentication. And this takes a little bit to set up, but if you're thinking immediately it would be nice not to have to type in your password, then it'll be worth the effort. Part of the trouble is that the tools that are used for this are somewhat different and don't have universal availability on all platforms. So we'll start with some of the basics that are certainly available on Linux and are likely to be available on Windows and Mac. And in the event that you run into trouble, like a certain command isn't working, I'll have some alternatives there for you. Um, the first command that you'll need to run is ssh keygen, and this should run in most terminals, both on Mac and Windows and Linux. If that's not the case, you're basically stuck and would have to figure out how to install software that does a similar thing. Uh, I'll demonstrate this command in a minute, but the premise is to create a pair of keys uh, using a technique known as public key cryptography. One is used in this case uh, symmetrically with the other, uh, sorry, asymmetrically with the other, uh, one to encrypt and the other to decrypt. And it's a way then to have some way of saying, I'm the only one in the world with this key uh, on my machine. And so I can take its partner and put it on another machine uh, and that will allow me to authenticate it's really me. There's, this is very cool technology that was invented originally in the 70s and has formed a major pillar of modern cryptography. You can take courses on this later on your program, but for the moment we'll focus our attention merely on the mechanics of making use of it. Uh, the type of key that we'll make use of, it was, it was the first one, that uh, first type that was uh, reported in this, uh, called an RSA key. Uh, so that's what little dash T option is here. Uh, so to generate that in a terminal, I'll switch over here and run that command ssh uh, keygen. Uh, let's see, I was typing tab, and I guess there are a couple options there, so a keygen. I want the type RSA, and as I punch enter, I'll be prompted to say where would you like this key pair to be stored. The default location in my home uh, .ssh directory is great, and calling it RD, uh, ID RSA is totally fine. So I'll just punch enter to accept that default option, and then press enter a couple times more to indicate I don't necessarily want a passphrase associated with this. Some additional information has been printed out, uh, but you'll see in your .ssh directory, if all went well, two files. They're mentioned up here, but also appear down here. ID RSA, that's the private key, and ID RSA .pub, this is the public key. The ID RSA is sort of like an identifier that should be kept secret at all times. But the public partner to this can be spread to any other machines that you want to log in uh, that are, uh, private, or are um, uh, to allow passwordless access. Now the next step is to get this file in some form, this id uh, rsa.pub, onto a remote machine that you want to log into and name it appropriately uh, that it's treated as a key that can be authenticated against. Now, depending on your system, there may be available a very handy utility known as ssh-copy-id. 
And this greatly simplifies things uh, in that it will copy the correct files, create any directories on the remote machine that need to be in place, and name things appropriately. Um, if possible, uh, type this command in. Uh, and you'll need to give the name of the remote machine. So that's your X500 and then at an IT labs, a CCIT labs machine like uh, apollo.cclabs.umnid.edu. Now it's my understanding that this command, SSH copy ID, isn't available out of the box on lots of systems. I think Windows and Mac, but that would be your first shot. And if it's there, Bob, then just make use of it. If you type in that command and punch enter and your terminal reports SSH copy ID not found, do not fear, uh, we can do this somewhat manually. Uh, now, uh, the first step to this is to make use of the SCP utility, and that's one that's useful. It's a secure copy command. Uh, we won't go into detail just now because that's the next sort of uh, portion of this program. But for the moment, we're going to make use of this uh, in order to transfer your public key onto the remote machine and name it appropriately. So you'll need a command that looks something like this, where the file that's on your local machine that you want to copy is this .sshidrsa.pub file. Uh, and the location that you want to copy it to is this remote machine, like your X500, that's your username there, at apollo.cclabs.umn.edu. That's one of several possibilities. Others are like Atlas or a Keller Hall lab machine, something like that. Importantly, then you'll want the colon here to indicate uh, this is a copy to a remote machine, and the location you want to put it is in your uh, remote SSH directory as a file named authorized keys. So if this is successful, uh, then that public key will be copied over. Uh, let us practice uh, what we preach. So here I'll do an SCP command. My uh, file is in the prescribed spot.ssh and it's idrsa.pub. Uh, and then the remote location will require my username, that's Kaufman for me. At, I'll pick Apollo as the example indicated, .cselabs.umn.edu. I'll put the colon down because that indicates this is a remote address and uh, with subdirector within there is where I want to put it. And I will plop down .ssh uh, and the file that I need to name this then uh, is listed over here. It's authorized keys. Now if you mess around with this before, uh, then this file might actually already exist and it's likely that you wouldn't necessarily want to overwrite it, but if this is your first time doing it, uh, then yeah, all should be well. Uh, if you're concerned about that, you can always SSH in and make a backup copy of this thing already. If I punch enter now, this will fire up an SSH connection that's going to contact Apollo. I'll have to password authenticate right now because I'm copying something over there, so I'm gonna punch in uh, my super secret UMN password. And that was correct, so I'll dual authenticate uh, with a push notification. Pick up my phone and see, oh, it's my friend's birthday. I should wish him a happy birthday. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, this thing looked okay. And oh crap, uh, doesn't look like I have an SSH directory on my remote machine. Fret not, this will just take a little bit of extra work. Uh, to that, I need to log into that machine and create this little SSH directory. Uh, we'll do that with an SSH. Actually, I'll just uh, move back up, uh, delete some of this stuff, and plop down an SSH over here to that machine. So this is going to log me in and give me a shell there. Uh, shoot, messing my password. Terra what? I know I butchered that one. <laughs> there we are. Push again. Yes, duo. It's me. It really is. Uh, and here, if I list the .ssh, ah, it's not there. So I'll have to create it using a, a mcdir um, uh, command .ssh. Uh, that will create the directory SSH. Uh, and uh, if uh, there's nothing in it right now, say so this fails. And then I'll type just exit. And this will leave my connection to uh, Apollo right now and get me back to my local machine. 
Um, if the initial copy succeeds, that uh, will demonstrate presently, then there's no need to log in there. Bob, you'll be on, already be on to the next step. And what I've just outlined over here uh, is down yonder, that if the copy fails for some reason, uh, then SSH into the machine, create the directory, and type exit. Now we'll run that same command again. So I'll go back up in history, this SS, uh, SCP. Punch in my password. One more do authenticate. And that has been copied over. Now if all has gone well, what we have now is a private key on your personal laptop and the corresponding public key on the remote machine and they are paired and named in such a way that every time you SSH in, it will use the private key and say, hey, check this against the public key, and if that checks out, SSH will just let you through. Let's check that by going back up here and SSHing. And voila, no password, no duo, I'm in automatically. This greatly eases the task of logging in uh, and is encouraged for all folks who want to make use of it. Uh, if you have trouble, feel free to contact me uh, via kaufman at umn.edu uh, to ask questions. Uh, otherwise, happy SSHing. I'll take a brief pause here and then move on to do some SCPing.